to a make uh, make your own fun special presentation i'm here with mike zone he is a great poet and he is the founder and editor of dumpster fire press and today we are here to talk and uh, see what we can figure out here about these ufo uap senate hearings in washington and just real quick i'll go through the players that we know about so far we've got ryan graves david fravor and uh david grush uh, the first two are retired uh, Navy fighter pilots, and the third is uh, David Grush, who's the former military intelligence officer. And the thing that was crazy is that we didn't know that he was uh, working with the Pentagon Task Force Intelligence Division thing <laughs> that we don't know about for UFOs, UAPs. And I think a lot of the taxpayers are going like, what? <laughs> this is a thing? We're paying for this? We didn't even know what this is? And are you sure this isn't like an episode of the X-Files? So granted, there's a lot of give and take, and I'll, I'll let you speak here in a minute, you know, just about like, well, show me the body, show me the evidence, show me the proof. There was a lot of like, I'd like to discuss that privately. I, I signed an NDA. I, I can't talk about that. And they're like, all right. So, all right. What's your, what's your two cents about this whole thing? All right, so I'm not going to dispel, uh, our universe is vast enough that I'm not going to dispel the existence of extraterrestrials. I'm even going to go so far as to say we do have transdimensional beings. I mean, let's look at Terrence McKenna and the DMTLs, you know, making machines with their mouths. Ooh, make, make, you can do this too. It takes some DMT. But um, what do I make of this icy, grainy 1980s video game footage and so like all i'm seeing is 1980s like grainy video game footage that's all i'm seeing right now i'm just and i'm hearing speculation this that you know i i've watched it uh i've, I've watched the footage twice I've, I've watched the news snippets and i don't see anyone really saying anything and you know it's like oh you know the tech we saw this we saw that again where is the I, i'm not seeing any tangible evidence here and, and that's where I'm coming from. I'm not dispelling it. And the way I look at it is we live in a simulation. And this is like a whole slew of Russian doll compartmentalization here. Now, I'm willing to say we do have lizard people. And by the lizard people, I'm going to say that at the forefront is the reptile brain with, the, uh, with all the psychopathy and sociopathy that's behind a lot of this. Uh, I think uh, the war on drugs has stopped working. I think the war on terror has stopped working. So they took a page from Alan Moore and they threw the giant squid from outer space at us. That's, that's <laughs> true too. But you know, in ta in terms of the um, the wacka wacka Hong Kong like of the diversion stuff, it's interesting yeah. that like right toward the end of the broadcast of the hearing, it was like. You know, breaking news about the Hunter Biden scandal, and it's like they always do that whenever there's like there seems and that like too. something, and then it's just cut right to some stupid crap that no one really cares about, but people care about stupid crap. But it's that it's like culture of fear, and you know you gotta look at Goebbels, you gotta look at the Red Scare with McCarthy, and you definitely gotta look at QAnon here, and all that. And you know, you come up with this zany, you come up with these zany theories, and then you bring something, you bring out the, the culture of fear there, and then you bring out the uh, then you bring out something kind of moderate, which people are gonna be like, well, fuck this, I don't care about Hunter Biden, I'm gonna turn it off, I don't care about the president, so I'm really worried about these UFOs. You know, it's just it, to me, it looks like good old fashioned propaganda here, and and you know, uh, 
And a lot of people would say, well, why after all these years is it coming? Are, are all these secrets coming out about UFOs? Well, I'll tell you this. 2016, we could have had a progressive president. People are, were, are, people are voting for more progressive dr uh, drug reform. People want more progressive environmental reforms. People want more progressive economic reform. And how are you going to do that? You need, you need that external factor. You need to just hammer people with fear, like Cameron Hodge with the shock doctrine. You shock the public enough that they are not going to be, they're not going to be able to unify and form a coherent narrative to combat. That's right. Well, what's interesting too is that um, in 2017, I mean, we are reporter, um, through, we are living in, during the six extinction. Keep a, they want to keep the minds off that. They want to keep our minds off that. They don't want us to radically uh, restructure society. Anyway, um, yeah, in 2017, uh, Leslie Keene, who's an investigative reporter, um, she was part of a group that published an article in the New York Times um, talking about these Pentagon um, groups. I guess it's a one group. And it's weird how everything went from, you know, little green men and, you know, X-Files references to like, well, wait a minute they're actually doing the work and you know whether aliens are real or not it's like okay well they're following the money and the money is going like okay well such and such from these political campaigns is actually being put in these government agencies and it's kind of like well that's kind of the really scary thing is not whether we're like reverse engineering things to get iphone technology but kind of like where's my money and why is it going here and what the hell is going on? And so when it starts to get into like reputable news sources and it's not just, you know, Gus's gas station dot fart or whatever, and it's coming from things like that, it's kind of like, oh, well, you know, maybe we don't follow things and we find like E.T. eating Reese's Pieces, but we do find out like, well, money's being put aside somewhere. So how do you feel about that kind of stuff? Is she followed the money and she she's the one who broke the story in the New York Times. Leslie Keene is the woman's name. And they almost had to come forward and say, like, okay, well, yeah, you know, the money is coming in from these from these groups, these senators. And then now their senators are saying like people want answers. I mean, I know what you're talking about, but I can't <laughs> I really f I feel like a lot of it was staged except when we got to the when we got to the reporter. Now I will say there is some validity there. Now does it now are we going to say it's an extraterrestrial an extraterrestrial threat? It doesn't matter. I'm going to say maybe it is something the Pentagon is working on. Maybe it's some sort of black ops thing that we don't. I will say there's validity with that particular person. Now I would think everyone else would be I felt was smoke and mirrors. I okay. thought it was just kind of smoke and mirrors to kind of dispel this great myth, you know? <laughs> All right, fair enough. So um yeah. Let's go into like the footage that you saw. So I'm, I'm assuming you saw the footage that the two um, Navy pilots, the the one guy talking yeah. about, it was like a tic tac, and the other guy um, where they showed it was kind of like changing direction in mid air and then going underwater. So yeah. I mean, I guess before you say anything, my my thing is always like, why is it always with this stuff? And people are gonna get pissed when I say this, but like with Bigfoot and stuff like that, where it's like. It's always grainy. It's never clear. It's like I don't yes. see that that thing from like um, signs with M Night Shyamalan, where the kids are having the birthday party and the alien just walks around the shrubs yeah. down the street, and they're just like, oh. So I don't know if if, if the American public just. Needs it. It. I think otherwise, people are just gonna say like what you're saying. It's smoke and mirrors, but it's like, can they say? I mean, I they can say, but it's like. Is it because that we are reverse engineering these things for technology? And it's like if people found that out, I don't think people are going to run out of the Vatican and set themselves on fire or anything. 
No, no. I and you know, here's the thing here's the thing. It's the twenty first century and that's my issue with with the imagery. Like, why is it so grainy? It's the twenty first fucking century, man. <laughs> you know? I mean I look at you look at Chicago. You know, they, they were their street cams. They can, or even, God, I used to work at a Kohl's department store. Our surveillance cameras were so good. I could see what you were, what, who you were texting and what you were texting on a cell phone. So this, so that's where, that's where the doubt really creeps in. Again, what is with the, da- what is with this footage? Yeah. Why, because, why can't we get yeah, it? Yeah, like you think about that? stuff you've seen, um, um, Footage from like a Seven Eleven robbery, and yeah. you can tell what the guy's shirt logo says, and that's a <laughs> yeah. crappy twenty dollars Radio Shack camera, you know. Hell, you can see pores on people's skin on some <laughs> of those cameras. Pretty much, and pretty I'm just much. like, I'm like, why does this look like a video game I played in the nineteen in like nineteen eighty four? Yeah, oh, it no, well, like nineteen eighty seven really. That's when I had my eight bit Nintendo, but. So according to what they're saying, yeah. they are going to have another set of hearings. Um, from what they said before, there were going to be six people testifying, and then that was down to um, three. I don't know if that has anything to do with people backing out, or this was just who they could get in the day, or who people were you know, allowed to say what they wanted to say. But I guess there is going to be a, an, another set of hearings with four additional people testifying so i don't know if those people were going to and, uh, and they backed out and they got scared or is it just smoke and mirrors or is it look at this thing over here where i'm doing this nefarious thing over there so what's your take on that yeah like here's the thing you know like it's i hate to, <laughs> i hate to sound like a conspiracy theorist but there's a lot of validity to conspiracy theories uh, there's always that kernel of truth like i said with the lizard people the sociopathy and the psychopathy you know maybe uh we're going to get a presidential pardon for hunter biden or something like that or a presidential uh, pardon for 45 you know and we're not really going to pay attention to that because we got to worry about the little green men they're essentially <laughs> going to invade us you know but and, you know here's the thing you know i would love to be disproved in this believe me i i would love for this stuff to act, actually be real oh oh great we have a real threat to humanity let's get our shit together and like uh and, and like build that utopia and, and kick the shit out of the martians you know that that'd yeah. be a grand story <laughs> you know well, and it's true it, i mean if you i mean i don't want to get on my um you know ancient aliens crazy eraser exactly. row or whatever but if these things are real then they've been visiting here for thousands of years and people were saying well why do we yeah. only discover about them well if you think about it popular air flight with passengers only really got popular in the 30s and 40s yes so that's when all that would have happened and that's when you would have had eyewitnesses and stuff and there was this a lot of the stuff in the hearing about they said like ninety five percent of the eyewitnesses are dissuaded from making a, an official report because of the stigma attached to it, and I get that. Um, but the, there's only two things that somebody from another planet would have seen from off world that made made would make them think that we're not just a funky zoo, which would be yeah oh for the, sure. uh, the atomic detonation in forty five and the moon landing everything else we're just self contained in our own little ball of chaos and they're just like yeah let's, let's <laughs> unless they're people. waiting for us to kill our to kill ourselves <laughs> so they can <laughs> take the like, damn planet into a when can we go just I'm kind of wondering you know place. like if they've been like visiting all this time and they haven't made themselves known it's like oh okay. What are you observing and why are you observing? Oh, wow, they're getting pretty close to blowing the... Or it could be one of those things, you know, if we're going to throw caution to the wind, it could be one of those things where they don't look that dissimilar to us. And so with all of our, you know, movies, our our science fiction B movies from the 50s and 60s, where they look like giant praying mantises and giant bulging eyes and saliva that can burn through the floor and stuff. (laughs) we have these preconceived notions so if we do see them and they look just a little dissimilar to us would, would be would we as a society just go oh that that's it oh it might be under it might be that underwhelming yeah like they they get they come out wearing but i think uh, there are possibility 
they all come out with like horns. I think I'd be okay horns. with that. <laughs> they're like, oh, we're just here for. I this. mean, if they looked anything like the, uh, they could be. Yeah, yeah, they could be just tourists, but you know. So what's if, your what's your take on the? If anything, the, I'm thinking. If if we get to the the root of this stuff, which is the the hardcore investigative reporting stuff. Um, you know, Leslie Keen had that great article in the New York Times about six years ago where they were talking about they just followed the money. I mean, it's in the New York Times. It's one of those things where they're watching. Mr. This is nothing new about misappropriation of funds, but it's one yeah. of those things where it's like. It's going where <laughs> this 20 million dollars or ho however much it was, at least that that's what they know about. That's the hardcore investigative journalism where it's like. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Slow your roll. So, so this money's going somewhere. Yeah. Oh, we know that there are military bases at, at Wright uh, Patterson Air Force Base and and date outside of Dayton. Yeah. And we know about Area Fifty One and some of these other things. But but the thing you know, you know, putting aside all, all of the you know the showboating and the the uh, little green men stuff, it's like well. <laughs> How much calendestine uh, stuff is going on where it's like, okay, you caught us. We put this money aside. I guess there's this division we should talk about because now you guys think <laughs> about it. <laughs> so what's your thought about that? Yeah. My thought about it is why are we following the money, say, with the DEA? where that money is going. Why are we following the money when it comes to say why we can't have Medicare for all? You know, why are we following the money? Well, with you some can. You just have to live in Canada. Canada. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I, I get that. I get, I, I get that. And, uh, and this is why I'm, this is why I'm a big proponent of people going to work sick, you know, but, uh, <laughs> but, you know, again, you know, why, are, this is where I kind of think, this is where I start to see the fiction. And things we're we're following yeah. money in the secretive Pentagon programs, cool. But um, why are we not following the money when it comes to say setting up coups in South America? Over I the think years? that there and, and this is where the doubt and the don't think it's it's gotten it doesn't capture the public's imagination. You know, you call something a UFO or a UAP hearing, and all of a sudden, exactly, you got people lined up all around the block because they're going, "Okay, and this is like where the I come first in." First time in recorded history, you're going to have cameras in a hearing to talk about this. Whereas before, before the Leslie Keen article in the New York Times, this stuff was always just kind of like, whatever, you know. Okay, Fox Mulder, chase your little green man. But you know, remember none of this stuff. Oh, sorry. None of this stuff really came out until people started having a problem with fascism when it came to 45. All of a sudden, this start, like you said, around 2017, this, start, this started coming up. Then they uh, threw us with uh, 46. And then, you know, uh, then you started seeing all these progressive ideals start to get, you know, kind of shoved away to the side. So now all of a sudden we're getting these UFOs, not but... Here's another part. Here's another thing that'll bake people's noodles. <laughs> noodles right now, we've got like we, we're rife with government corruption. I uh, again with everything else in the news. I don't need to talk about what's happening with 45. I don't need to talk about what's happening with 46's son. But a lot of shit is just coming out. So what do we have to do? We have to be like, oh hey, look, UFOs. Here, here's our secret department that, you know, we're not supposed to talk about. Let, let's focus on this. That's it's not really going anywhere. We don't really, we have scant evidence. We'll, we'll feed you something for you to distract your brain on. Because, frankly, a lot of people with the subscription services and the streaming, they don't have money to go to the – they don't have money to stream. They don't have money to go to the movies anymore. No, no, no. We're going to sit here. We're going to watch basic analog TV, and we're going to give you some shitty news story. Yeah, <laughs> and, well – and to, to piggyback on what we were talking about earlier, too, which is why now? What what makes now the time versus when the, all those UFO sightings were really prevalent in the 40s and 50s? And you can chalk that up to like the Red Scare, um, you know, all that during the Cold oh, War sure. to the point where the Air Force said, yeah, that they did put out a brief that said, to, you know, downplay everything because if we're worried about you know, Russians sending bombers over um, Alaska down into uh, the the upper, you know, to the 48 states. Um, 
you know, we don't want weather balloons. We we want tangible targets because it's like if this is just swamp gas or whatever crap. Because I mean, there was things like exactly. Project, there were things like Project Blue Book, and then I can't remember the name of the oh, professor yeah. who was involved with that, but he even discounted that and said, "Yeah, I was really pressured to dismiss everything." But again, is that folly for in his later years he was all about and you'll see it all in my new tell all book and he's out on the yeah, I, I know. Trail doing the talk shows and stuff and it's like all right well by the nature of it, it kind of reminds me of graham it kind of reminds me of graham hancock's work the secret of the sphinx and God, was it the Chariot of the Gods? Yeah, 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 Chariot of the Gods. And then there was this uh, other guy, this other whistleblower from Area 51, and his name was Bob Lazar. He's been on a lot of the um, the podcasts and stuff recently, like Joe Rogan Experience and stuff. And it's just, again, it's one of those things where it's like, yeah, if, the, if you work there and then you became a whistleblower, and this was like years ago in the, in the 80s and 90s that he worked there, and it's kind of like, well... It was really sensitive stuff, and I I don't know if he's gotten threats too, but it's kind of like they would have not silenced him like mafia right style. Now. I think that they would have paid him off, you know, if it was like really, really, really heinous government secrets. I think they would have totally paid that guy off. You know? I think you know if you really are exposing government secrets, they're not going to threaten you. I think they're just you're just going to miraculously vanish or commit suicide. Your brakes go out on a rainy night for no reason. You're like, well, uh. exactly. <laughs> okay, so all right. Well, what what do you think is next? What do you think you know with these? It's if it, if it's another hearing, which we already know is is coming, but is that going to be like a successive string of hearings? Is it a dog and pony show? Is this another thing that's that's going on? Because I do know that a month prior to the, the Senate hearing in uh, D.C., uh, there was a NASA conglomerate, and they talked about a UFO crash site in northern Iraq that happened earlier this year. So that begs the question, okay, to add validity to what happened in D.C., why was there nobody from NASA at the hearing that just happened last week? Because, I mean, you want to add credibility what you know you've got and i was going to bring got, that up you know, navy pilots and you've got this got the caa cia spook or whatever but it's like yeah you need nasa yeah, or where's NASA? something i'll let you speak go ahead no 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 and that's that's my that's what i was gonna bring up where where is nasa and all this hell i'd be happy to see neil degrasse tyson <laughs> at this point well yeah but i guess no, what they're going I, uh, for what now is, is eyewitness accounts at least for this past hearing with eyewitness accounts the thing about the david Grush yeah, deal, I, and I, and I get he really lobbed up a lot of softballs which were great but then when it came to the hard-hitting questions and i can't remember the congresswoman's name and she got him to mention you know he that's where he said biologics or whatever but um yeah it's kind of like what did he call it a skiff i don't remember what the acronym is where it's like you have to go in a private room where there's no white internet connection there's no recording device nothing written down it's like you just go in across the table from somebody and you spill your yeah beans, and then you leave but it's kind of it's like, like where you would do a rendition yeah and it's kind of like yeah what you're going to tell them i mean i get i guess he is still employed by the government. The other two guys were former Navy pilots, but David Grush, I think, still works for the government. So it's kind of like, okay, if you go in this shoebox or whatever it is you're talking about and you tell them this stuff, whoever you tell this stuff to, what are you going to do with that? Are you going to try to get that stuff declassified? Because it's like, what's the point? It's like if you... That's great. He feels that relief, that burden. He gets it off his chest and he's like, here's everything I know and I'm good to go and nothing is written yeah. or recorded. But then he gives that information to those people. And then what are they what can they do with that if it's classified? I I think they're just, they would just sit, they're just gonna sit on it. And that, that's just what yeah, happens. And but maybe, maybe if the public maybe knows, fabricates and people will follow yeah. this guy. This guy is kind of becoming famous now. Yeah. 
as the most famous whistleblower yeah. ever. People are going to follow him with telephoto lenses, and they're going to see him go to the facility. Fuck, they're going to track his cars, everything. So they'll know when and where, oh, yeah. and, and then the media will announce it. So it's kind of like, okay, well, we as a public, we know he's going to the, the place to do the stuff and talk about the things. And it's like, okay, yeah. so... And, and then they're going to have that, it's going to be such a anticlimactic and like, you know, can you imagine um, whoever it is that was in the room like, we had discussions and they went great. Thank you for your time, everybody. At that point, you know, what, what happens? What, what, what goes from there? So, um, all right. So what do you think is going to be the gist of like the, the, the follow-up from this stuff? Do you think that they will get him into that situation where he spills the beans like privately? Here's the thing. If it's technology they're developing, they're going to showcase a sample of something. They'll showcase a sample and they'll make the policy, they, you know, they'll alleviate fears. Whether or not it's, uh, whether or not, again, it's a, from an extraterrestrial origin or not, they're, they're just going to, oh, yeah, here, here's what we've been working on. We've been working on this new uh, weather balloon, <laughs> you know, that can turn into a underwater car that goes to china or something it's a transformer i don't know <laughs> yeah it's a giant yeah it's, we've been working on transformers guys you know you can relax now yeah that, that's what that's what we're gonna get and you know like like i know a guy i worked with a guy who uh i probably shouldn't say who he is but his brother had that did work with the government he was a scientist and he would talk about like, yeah, yeah, my uh, brothers tell me how they are developing Spider-Man suits and they're developing like Iron Man type suits and, and shit like that. And like, you know, the type of body armor you see in the Batman films. So That's we'll get cool. a little sample. Of, yeah, we'll get a sample of that. But, you know, are we going to get the are we going to get the full picture? No, you know, we might us, not ever get the full picture. We might what, not ever be able to. They're not, they're not going to say what it's being utilized for, though. True. All right. Well, in the interest of, I don't know how long this internet connection is going to last. I, I know. Um, we, I know. Uh, we we well, did, pre the, uh, did is... prepare some, uh, some uh, I guess, alien encounter, um, some writing. Yeah. So um, I'll let you start with it and then I'll read mine and then we'll wrap it up here because, God, I hope this connection lasts. So go ahead. I, I, I know. Your well, this is sample uh from my book octopi from the sky uh it was put out by dfp it was an homage to be movies this is about a uh, space octopi landing on the planet and all that jazz so here we go uh the sky I'll, I'll set the premise up here the sky uh find this guy finds a uh a baby cosmic octopi that crash lands in his backyard and he takes it to his kitchen would chunks of intergalactic octopi of a standard nature be welcome in the spuds he would mash for his lady love? Love, The stable butcher knife in his trembling hand didn't answer his question as he drove the blade into the creature's head and swiftly split it down the middle as a milky liquid spewed forth running down his hand, being absorbed into his pores as he drove his free hand into the octopi's hand, crushing some sort of pulsating organ into its palm. On the other hand, sentinels resting between the borders between entrop entropy and infinity have a much better grasp on how the universe works. And if there just happens to be a tear in the fabric of being and time and new worlds open, isn't it time for a bit of trans-dimensional perusal and genetic acclimation for explode expl exploration? Moaned Clatt's veins being cleaned out by piano wire. Something started breaking and snapping inside, Cl inside Clatt. As his knees shattered and organs slid up his chest, a cold thru thru a thrust rushing up and out of his uh, up and out of his mouth, immediately being caught in a deluge, a black celestial charged ink projected from the octopus in the sink as it lay dying, yellow eyes wide open, wide open, locking onto Clat's own ocular orbs. The duels the duels pupils dilating. Filling the eyes, eclipsing blues and yellows, liquefying and emulating the alien ink being spurted around about the room. Each one seeing and experiencing what the other had in each his respective world. Clat saw worlds die, die and be born in intergalactic fire and rain. 
wondering, wondering if this is how he was meant to die without feeling self-satisfied, individualized, romantic love. Nice. And what was the name of the piece? Yeah, thanks. Oh, it is called Snow Crash, and it is from uh, Dumpster Fire Press's second uh, anthology, Octopi from the Sky, dedicated to B-movies. My art director at the time got drunk and came up with a bunch of uh, octopi uh, drawings. And I was like, oh, cool, we'll, uh, we'll arrange an anthology around that. That's great. All right, well, here we go. I'm going to give you mine here. Oh, right on. <laughs> if you're going to have a tinfoil hat and reuse it, make sure it's got a handle. All right. So oh, hell yeah. This one is kind of looking like a John Madden playbook because I literally just scribbled this like a couple hours ago. So oh this is called Welcome Interstellar Travelers. Greetings, friends from afar. My code name here is Phil, as in fill in the blank. Get it? Welcome to our alien convention. This is how we bring you into our combustible chaos our new neurotic overwatch, our fake reality show lives, our anxiety-ridden existence. Falling off. <laughs> oh, and thank you all for the wonderful technology for us to painstakingly reverse engineer and sell. We are your our obedient little sheep. What is a sheep, you ask? A blind herd of followers, a person who settles easily an easily swayed community. Hmm. So to integrate you into our culture, you'll all need to put on these quaint little alien costumes and masks. Re-rationalize the fantastical here. Uses, use the phrases bro and yeah, bitch, consistently. You can use them for literally anything. You don't need any money here. The government gave you all a full ride, you lucky bastards. And last but not least, to truly be invisible here, act as foolishly as possible in public. Film everything and post it online. Feel free to linger at the pool and then exit through the wax machine, machine the wax museum gift shop. Welcome to your new normal. That's it. And that was called Welcome that. Interstellar Travelers. <sighs> okay, well, that. we That's made it. Team. All right, so let's just wrap it up here. So go ahead and, uh, Mike, tell the folks about your uh, press and your website and what you've got coming up. Okay. Well, I just found a Dead Star Control, which is a uh, multi-media uh, counterculture venture. I brought back uh, Dumpster Fire Press, which is going to be a part of that. Dumpster Fire Press is relaunching in September. I brought uh, an additional five editors. I've also revised my friend's record label, uh, Paran Paranormal Vinyl Cassettes and Hair Extensions. And we are going to be bringing, we're going to be combining the publishing along with uh, music, tying just everything together. Uh, PVC Hex will probably uh, launch in, I want to say, October, because that's when his band, uh, I'm managing his band tail from the Crypt, shameless plug there. Uh, my new book, uh, Wonderful Turbulence, will be the first release from Dumpster Fire Press, because, well, what can I say? I'm an arrogant prick. <laughs> <laughs> so it may as well be one of the first releases. So, uh, yeah, we got, we got some good stuff coming out. We're going to have some uh, anthologies. Voices from the Fire will be starting up. Uh, Again, uh, submissions, be on the lookout for that. Either at the end of October or the beginning of September. Okay. We're Let ready. We're know gonna... where they can find your work online. Oh, yeah, no problem. Dumpsterfirepress.com, uh, deadstarcontrol.com, madswirl.com. Uh, I'm a uh, contributing poet there. And, uh, hell, you can look, just Google me, uh, Fevers of the Mind, uh, Piker Press, uh, Synchronized Chaos. I'm all over the board. Probably the easiest would be Mike Zone at LinkedIn. You'll find uh, links to over 300 publication credits. Right on. Well, thank you so much for being on this special episode. I will save it somehow with editing. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> and, I hope so. Uh, I appreciate like I said, it. It will be up uh, Tuesday, August 1st. Thank you so much. The poem was great. And make sure if anybody watching this, check out uh, dumpsterfirepress.com, all of Mike's wonderful things. And with that, I say good day to you, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, take care. Enjoy. Have, Have fun.
All right, bye-bye. All right.